The other group of drugs which are indicated in patients with the heart failure is your anticoagulation therapy. Now remember this anticoagulation therapy is indicated in patients with heart failure who are having the risk of developing thromboembolism. Right? So those individuals who are having the risk of thromboembolism Right, who are having the risk of thromboembolism, you have to give this anticoagulation therapy. Now, who are those group of individuals who are at risk of developing thromboembolism? Now, remember those individuals who are having atrial fibrillation, you have to give anticoagulation therapy. And those individuals with heart failure due to some valvular heart diseases, you have to give the anticoagulation. Because these valvular heart diseases, for example, you take severe mitral stenosis, the individual may have the mitral stenosis associated with mitral regurgitation. These individuals, they have the risk of developing thromboembolism. So you have to give the anticoagulation therapy. Next, in those group of individuals who have documented left ventricular thrombos, thrombus formation, who have history of documented left ventricular thrombus formation you have to give this anticoagulation therapy next the other area or the other clinical scenario where you have to give this anticoagulation therapy is in those individuals with very low ejection fraction because in clinical scenario of very low ejection fraction the cardiac contractility will be reduced once the cardiac contractility is reduced there will be stasis of the blood flow and because of the stasis of the blood flow there may be chances of having this thromboembolism and for which you have to give this anticoagulation therapy now if you take this anticoagulation therapy this anticoagulation therapy it includes your conventional heparin that is unfractionated heparin or in order to have or in order to see that the side effects of the anticoagulant therapy should be reduced instead of unfractionated heparin we have a low molecular weight heparins and at the time of discharge of the patient we have to give, convert this parenteral anticoagulants to the oral anticoagulants the oral anticoagulants they include the vitamin k antagonist they include what is called as the newer oral anticoagulants that includes the direct thrombin inhibitor that is dabigatran or your the other important drugs they include factor 10a inhibitors factor 10a inhibitors include epixaban and as well as rivaroxaban so these are your anticoagulants that is conventional unfractionated heparin low molecular weight heparin oral anticoagulants like vitamin k antagonist and the newer oral anticoagulants that is your direct thrombin inhibitors that is dabigatron and as well as the factor 10a inhibitors that is your epixaban and as well as rivaroxaban so remember these are the anticoagulation therapy in patients with the congestive cardiac failure now apart from this anticoagulation therapy remember the other group of drugs which are required is your omega-3 fatty acids omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids now what the studies were showing is this omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid supplementation is reasonable in patients with nyha class 2 to class 4 so whenever you give this omega-3 fatty acids in patients with nyha class 2 to class 4 symptoms they will reduce the mortality and they will also reduce the cardiovascular hospitalization of a patient with the congestive cardiac failure so this is your medical management in patients with the congestive cardiac failure